Hello everyone, my name is Shamal Rajivan and I will be doing a presentation on corporate governance. So in this presentation I will be covering what is corporate governance and uh, what kind of impact corporate governance has on the entities and the countries and how is it is managed and what kind of uh, failures or what kind of issues if a corporate governance fails we're going to look into these matters and uh, we're going to discuss further on this presentation so let's start with uh, what is corporate governance so corporate governance is simply a system of rules practices by which a company is directed and controlled so when it comes to a company it can be an, it can be actually any company it can be an organization, it can be a private entity, it can be an NGO or a government organization or any other corporate body. It actually, uh, the definition is not limited. And uh, why do we need a corporate governance is that when it comes to an organization or a company, there are many stakeholders and each of the stakeholders have to act in a coordinated manner and they have to act in an organized, organized way to achieve the common interest of the company. It can be a profit maximization or a common uh, non-governmental uh, goal, but it really doesn't matter. But so this set of rules and practices will give a platform, a common platform. So in that way, the stakeholders can act act without compromising or without uh, ready, uh, eliminating or reducing their interest and they can achieve the common objective of the organization with uh, little or minimum conflict of interest so why is this corporate governance is important so basically now all the organizations or government institutions they will have common objective and in this object in order to achieve this objective the companies or specifically the individual parties to stakeholders they have to operate in a cooperative and co cooperative manner in a productive manner without compromising the common goal so the company has let's say for assume let's say it's a private entity if it's a private entity if it's a private entity their common goal is profit maximization so when it comes to profit maximization all the related parties in the company like for example managers the directors the assistant managers the executive even the layman staff they do have to act in a organized or they have to have in mind that they are working for a common goal and that is which is the profit maximization or a shareholder wealth maximization but uh, do remember now when it comes to a company the company uh, the, those who own the company and those who run the companies most of the time are two di different individuals because for example now that even take a private entity the founders may not be the ones who are running the company so because at the beginning when you are founding a private limited the minimum as per trade income rule there need to be two directors present so they two directors at the start of the company may do all the business activities but as long as they grow they will hire third party people or unknown or professionals to manage their business. But at this juncture, how do the uh, directors or the owners of the company can assure that the hired third party professionals will act in the best interest of their company? What if they start to manipulate the company records, the company assets and the company resources for their own uh, beneficial? So this is a major concern not only for a private entity but also a public listed company as well as a private uh, any other form of organization even if it's a small uh, family run business where 
the family owners will eventually have to depend on some third party professionals or the professionals and the other stakeholders so this is basically defined or this is basically uh, defined in the agency theory so this is actually known as the agency problem so basically what happens here is uh, the, the company or the principal the owners owners will hire professionals basically accountants marketing managers directors uh, operational heads to run their company when this happens how can the principals and the principal or the owners can assure that managers will act in the best interest of the company or shareholder maximization or profit maximization so this problem is universal and initially the first time this problem was identified by uh, Adam Smith uh, in his nations of wealth so earlier during the East Indian Company uh, in the British colonial times uh, these British owners they made ships and they made uh, vessels to send uh, export and import goods or to con con even pro probably Sri Lanka or India or the co all the Commonwealth countries so what happened here is that uh, when this East Indian company hired uh, these ships or they hired these uh, captains to commandeer these ships the owners and the captains are two different personnels so those who own the ship do not con do not use the vessels and the captains are not owners of the vessels so the, basically the uh, owners are living in um, UK or the British Great Britain while the others were working on the ship and they went to Sri Lanka India and all other common world countries and at this juncture there was an issue how do the owners have home or the directors whoever can assure that the captains and the vessel crew the ship crew are acting in the best interest of the company and uh, what if they are manipulating the goods received and the goods are imported and exported via these ships they cannot uh, they simply they have to rely, they rely on the good nature of the captain or the ship uh, commander ship captain so this is the first instance where this agency problem was raised and this is the first instance where the corporate governance was origin so the corporate governance issue basically the agency problem issue was realized or was cited or theorized during adam said in 79 1776 so so now let's say what happens what happens when the company or the management do not act in the way intended or they do really nilly things to just to sabotage or to get their self-interest so there are various uh, well-known cases universal uh, in the country uh, sorry in the world uh, the first foremost is the Enron scandal now which is uh, what happened here is that the directors they in order to increase their bonuses and show that they are a big company they are doing well they manipulated their earnings and showed in the public accounts or the published accounts and uh, not only that even the auditors they did not act in the public interest they are acted in the self-interest in order to secure their payments so whatever the director said the auditors eventually the e auditors were at Anderson and they were one of the big five firms and they just did what the director said they manipulated and uh, the directors manipulated the fraudulent funds and the uh, author on Anderson Arthur, Arthur Anderson's said okay you guys these accounts are true gives a true and fair view there's no issue 
there are no concern for this and they gave out published accounts to the public and the share prices rose but eventually the company collapsed because these were not actual earnings they actually the company was making a loss and uh, end of the day all the shareholders were at a loss and the directors were uh, by charges by the government and uh, the auditors which one of the cru par crucial part of this scandal was uh, de decommissioned in the sense they lost their license to practice and the, the at Anderson firms were closed down uh, similarly all this work on Tyco, Global Crossing, Royal Health, Parmalat, Walmart, Xerox were world class examples where corporate governance where the managers did not act in the common interest of the company but in their self interest so this is why you need a corporate governance structure of rules and regulation to safeguard the company their shareholders and the owners but even though there is a corporate governance structure a corporate governance structure and there are various rules the even uh, there are some you can say loopholes in the system we will yet to discuss that on so what about sri lanka is there any corporate governance failure in sri lanka of course <laughs> there are a lot of failures uh, the, the the old cases were the pramukha bank scandal and one of the one of the major is the golden key uh, financial company deposit and i have attached a screenshot here saying that protests going on and they were issued check and all the checks were defrauded and likewise even now the currently the biggest scams are uh, one of the scams in Sri Lanka was the Sri Lankan bond scam and uh, recently uh, there was an issue with the Sri Lankan standard board where they have bought down uh, coconut oil which were not up to the standard and which were uh, raising so many red flags nowadays and it was very much on the news and all of this happened because those who are in charge those who are on the corporate governance those who are supposed to be looking after the interest of the shareholders the company the public they failed they basically didn't do their job they didn't act the way they supposed to they acted in their self-interest they because of this this corporate government because of this all these scams the bond scam happened in Sri Lanka as soon as if they had a better corporate governance structure or at least the people with the governance authority should have acted in the best interest of the company and the public at large this would have happened so now it has happened now we have to find a way to remediate it. remedy it but uh, it won't be easy and it won't be cheap and uh, since the government structure in Sri Lanka is principle based and there is a there are a lot of loopholes and simply they can just uh, get away with it unfortunately so now let's say corporate governance at a global level so are there any rules and regulations yes they are for example, now if you take corporate governance the approaches, you can either go by rule base. So, uh, since we are a UK uh, Commonwealth or we are a British colony, all the British uh, colonies or the British um, Commonwealth countries, they have a principle base because our legal system is based on UK. And uh, rule base basically goes to USA, and Canada, and the Northern, Northern American and South America regions. So that SOX, our SOX, in Sarbanes and Oxley Act. So, and there's uh, ownership models, which we'll later discuss, and other covenant, um, covenant codes as OCED and uh, ICGN. So basically, since we are a UK company, a uh, UK uh, British colonial uh, country let's say the history of corporate governance so initially the corporate governance code was developed in 1992 after all these scandals and these 
started showing up and uh, people started to lose interest in these public listed entities as well as normal private entities. After that, uh, Greenberry report, Humphrey report, Higgs report, and the major revision was in 2010 UK corporate governance. This is the time when we started to get involved in corporate governance and developing a corporate governance board to Sri Lanka. But um, when you take uh, the Sri Lankan um, corporate governance board, it, it is something similar to the UK code. As you can see, the uh, initial code was developed in 1991, 1992, and uh, uh, right around 1995 and 1998, Sri Lanka started to adopt practices matter in financial corporate governance. And uh, the major parties involved in this development in corporate governance code in Sri Lanka were I CASL Institute of Chartered Accountants, Central Bank of uh, Sri Lanka, Security Exchange Commission, and uh, set up um, structured share market. These are the comp these are the entities which involved in this uh, uh, corporate governance code development. But however, uh, still the most of the codes are. Um, voluntary even the latest code the, the last code in, is issued in 2017 was about the best practices on corporate governance it is still mandatory but all the companies do publish a corporate governance checklist in their annual reports or their integrated annual reports except uh, there are some listing rules which public listed companies which was issued in 2004 which is mandatory and Banking Act direction also issued by CBSL and this is also mandatory for listing companies and banks. But uh, when it comes to corporate governance structure, it is still voluntary but however, since all the listed companies uh, issue public uh, published accounts, they do issue a corporate governance checklist along with their reports. Uh, basically saying that they have adhered to the requirements as per the 2017 for the best practices on corporate governance. So when it comes to corporate governance uh, Sri Lanka 2017 and this had two major sections. One is the company and the other is shareholders. So with regard to this, um, in this, um, this code um, gives instructions um, how directors should be there, how many directors of independent directors, how many executive directors, how they should be remunerated, how they should uh, have the relationship with their stakeholders, accountability, and audit, and how it should be segregated, and whether independence is assured. Um, this uh, seems like a little, but the book, the code is actually uh, quite lumpsome. And it has very in detail section on these matters. And the second major section goes into shareholders, where are institutional investors, are they investors, internet of things, and how environment and society and government should be affected. All this a subsection. And uh, it is advised that uh, you all go through this code, at least have a slight overview and see how what is what, and uh, you will get an idea on how Sri Lanka is operating on this level. And when it comes to model, model in the sense, how is the management structured or the directors or the, the board, the board of directors structured inside the company? So um, I'll just, there are many models, I'll just explain three mm, very uh, commonly used models in the world or in the universe, in the world. And uh, three of the models are one is Anglo Saxon model, and the second one is German model and Japan model. So Anglo-Saxon model is where the shareholders appoint the directors and they in turn appoint the employees. The, this is the very uh, common model or the common model we share among the UK, USA and all the Western countries. Even in Sri Lanka, Anglo-Saxon model is present as we are a British colony, colonial. And German model, uh, this is actually a two-time model where the board has two separate boards one is for the supervisory and the other one is management board uh, but in germans a large majority of the shareholders are bank and financial that is uh, prominently seen 
and uh, only 50% of the employees can award on whom to be selected for the supervisory role. And uh, Japan model is very family centric. In, um, basically, the shareholders, bank, and families are the major shareholders in that uh, business model or the corporate governance model. And there are Indian models, there's are Australian and New Zealand models, there are various models, but um, due to time limiting factor, we will only see these three as a major. And as a Sri Lankan uh, um, entity, also, we will be majorly looking at the Anglo Saxon model because you know, shareholders have the ultimate power to appoint the directors at the AGM or emergency, um, mm. extraordinary emergency meetings. So, protecting corporate governance is there if there's something wrong can anyone raise a concern within the company let's say a director employee or a professional uh, professional capacity a person employed at a professional capacity let's say a director is asking someone to do or is doing some fraudulent work with the earnings and management and uh, but initially if a director should abide by the professional code of ethics and professional code of conduct so he should have public interest he should not have any conflict of interest with this interest at the company and he should respect the um, safety and equity um, stewardship of the process basically confidentiality professional development so these are the main concern that even a director should not violate his uh, powers but let's assume in this case if there is a uh, issue for director and there's a director manipulating uh, funds let's say or asking the accountant to pass fraudulent and entries should the be accountant should the accountant can raise a concern with the relevant authorities uh, the answer is no actually the answer is no up to 2016 because uh, all the professionals are by, by, by the uh, professional code of ethics and code of conduct. So when you are professionally employed or professional capacity at any organization, whether you are an accountant, doctor, engineer, lawyer, marketer, it doesn't matter. You are bind by the code of conduct and code of ethics. So we suggest that you cannot at any point disclose anything that is private to the company. For confidential uh, matters of the company which is operated done within the uh, management or within the company limits so if if that person whistle goes whistle goes means goes directly to the authorities and stay there look this director or this uh, superior or this board of directors are manipulating are doing wrongdoing the company and they are they're compromising the common goal of the company so if that's the case the company or a person employed in the company cannot go willy-nilly and uh, file a case or a complaint to the authorities up until 2016 because what happened in 2016 is international ethics standard board for accountants especially specifically introduce something called NOCLA so NOCLA means non-compliance with roads and regulations so what happened here is now this standard has been uh, expanded to all other professionals but since uh, this is a management slide and we are talking about then I specifically took the uh, guide for accountant so if let's say if you are an accountant and if you found something or an accounting executive you found something that irregular or the director are doing something fishy or the director asks you to pass some bogus entries on your accounts you can simply rely on this code and within this code or within this rule you cannot you can raise a concern or you can report to the authorities saying that look Are my directors or my superiors are doing something fishy or they are trying to manipulate the books uh, they are manipulating the fund and it is not in the best interest of the company so they can simply take stance 
from or they are protected under NOCLA. So this is a real case and uh, I'll show you an example of what happened the first CEO who went uh, who actually uh, became a whistleblower. So now the one of the biggest scandals in 2011 was Olympus. It was a major uh, major Japan um, electronical company which produces good cameras and digital equipment. And what happened here is on October 14, 2011, Woodford, Mr. Woodford uh, was the first non Japanese CEO to be appointed to a Japanese company from outside. So, what happened is uh, now, as soon as uh, this guy came into the role and he started to find some fraudulent matters, fraudulent earnings, and then reported. And uh, as soon as he found out, he raised a concern, look, you guys are doing something wrong. And uh, as soon as this, when he raised the concern, uh, he raises the concern, this guy got stripped off a presidency and CEO's titles in October 14th. 2011 as soon as he find something he started reporting he started uh, went to the securities exchange commission to look uh, this olympus is doing something wrong please look into it and uh, as soon as uh, as soon as december 1st would uh, would for resigns his directorship in the move will set the board and seek the reflection uh, as a president by going directly to the shareholders so this is a gutsy move so See, he was a CEO and he just, he, he took a stance, look, you guys are wrong, you guys are doing something wrong, and you are a public entity, you cannot do it. But what happened to him? He got stripped, he got fired, because, yeah, simply because he went behind uh, the company's directors and uh, this. But uh, do keep in mind, uh, this happened in 2011 and the NOCLA came in 2016. So, all these events eventually led to the NOCLA, oh, NOCLA, in the sense of uh, non compliance of rules and regulation uh, provisions of the, the rule. So, what happened to him? Once he got resigned, what happened to him? Simple. Woodfalls and Olympus. So, fired two weeks after the acquiring regular payments. First, multinational CEO to blow this on 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 firm. Uh, basically, nothing happened to him. He was uh, he was recognized as a corporate hero. Eventually, he was recognized, and he, if you search his name on Google Woodford, you will see various articles, and he was he was now doing very well, to a fact. So. Guys, what am I saying here is the corporate governance is important, right? And if something is going wrong, it is better to raise the concern. And if it's a problem, if you cannot, if, you, if you, even if you are an accountant, if you're a CEO, it doesn't matter if you're a junior executive, if something going wrong in your organization, it's better to stand up, raise a voice. Forget your job because one company collapsing can affect the entire chain. There are multiple families and school children, uh, there are dependents, elderly mothers can be there. So everyone will get affected if you prolong it. I'm not saying that uh, okay, fine, your job is important, but just imagine just the, the long run, in the long run, the company can affect a lot of people. So if the corporate governance is not sound, companies will manipulate because as humans, we have a self-interest within us. We will act in our self-interest rather than common goal. So there are people like Woodford who, who took a stand and say, look, directors, you are doing it wrong. If you are not going to fix it, I will be fired. I will file it. With the relevant authorities so which which exactly what he did so uh, further on corporate governance so if education 
it should not be limited in my opinion it should not be limited to books only and resources there are good books which i have shown here uh, bok trika is one of the best uh, and the other one is springer journal it's a springer uh, journal book edition and uh, please read on these books it's available on the google as well and uh, if you are not a bookworm if you if you are not if you like digital please go and watch these movies um, movies in the sense uh, there's a documentary called inside job which uh, say what happens when uh, the car companies fail to do their corporate governance check or if they do not act in the best interest of the public or the best interest of the company the best interest of the shareholders and these inside job is a documentary and the big show uh, it happens on 2018 um, uh, dementia housing debt market and housing housing market uh, scams so the big short and the inside job um, better to watch these uh, two um, document the documentary and the movie these are well uh, it's well uh, well scripted and it's very informative and uh, rather reading a book it will give you a digital entertainment as well so please do watch and read these books uh, thank you for this uh, presentation and opportunity given to me and uh, I would, uh, thank you against the uh, university and the representative for this opportunity. Thank you.